over us and we ask that you give us the wisdom and the knowledge that we need God as we make decisions for the county and the city of Clusen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call please. Regular meeting of the Hendry County Board of County Commissioners being held on Tuesday, December 14th, 2021 at 5 p.m. in the County Commission Chambers in LaBelle, Florida. In attendance are Chairman Mitchell Wills, Vice Chair Emma Bird, Commissioner Daryl Harris, Commissioner Raymond Iglesias, Commissioner Carson Turner, County Administrator Jennifer Davis, County Attorney Mark Lapp, Deputy Clerk Anita Bichelle. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, everyone. There is a paper in the back if you wish to speak tonight. If you would get it, please, and fill it out. Bring it up to the clerk's desk. They will make sure that that portion of the meeting you will get a chance to speak. Uh, most of your comments are held to a three-minute period, so um, as you do come, state your name of the diocese, who you are, and where you live, and we will move from there. Uh, first thing on the agenda tonight is the BOCC calendar, 21-22. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to request that we have um, unless y'all are against it, um, I would love to have a meeting back in uh, Pioneer and um, and in Harlem, if at all possible. I'd love to know what y'all's thoughts are. And I know I, I, we've gone down to Felda, and I really enjoyed making that field trip as well. I'd love to know what the, the thoughts are of the board. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's good to take. I think it's good to take it out to the give them an opportunity to be there. I think we need to look at those times when we go and make sure everyone has time to get off work and attend. So uh, that, that would be the only thing I would say, instead of having a, a you know a 5 o'clock meeting in the community, maybe at 6 o'clock, to give the, them an opportunity to be there. The other thing, too, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Chair, is um, I think that we've, with the exception of just a couple examples, we've, we've, been, we've been tying our meetings down within an hour and a half. Have we not? I mean, we've been we've been hour and a half and under for a number of times. Yep. No, Mark, I think so. Mark remembers. <laughs> Not the last few, but some of them have been. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've had many of those. But um, anyway, um, I think that um, if you if if y'all would be receptive to moving them to five thirty, um, it's just just a thought, just to make it a little bit easier for John and Jane Q if they wanted to. So I've had a handful of people say, you know, it's hard to get there. Hard to tune in, but just 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 my thoughts. I'd love to know what y'all think. If they get there by seven. They'll have plenty of time. I'm usually, always there till seven. I, uh, Commissioner, I like the idea. In fact, I would say six o'clock. Um, again, we meet twice a month. If we we are elected by the public to serve them, so if we come at six o'clock and they have the opportunity to be in the meeting, I, I think it's a great idea. That's just my opinion. So, Carson, you have an form of, of a motion. Y'all, 536, what are, you, what are y'all's thoughts? And then... Um, Six o'clock. Um, and then I'd like to know um, two parts of it. And then fell to Harlem, a pioneer. Um, I don't think the Seminole Tribe would be receptive to us coming down just yet because COVID has hit their community so hard. But um, that's that's where I'm at. And if, if nobody's uh, wanting to comment on it other than, than the comments, and I'll make, I will make all those in the form of a motion with regards to the satellite meetings um i don't have a date in mind so i'd just like for staff to kind of roll those in there and, and maybe bring some dates back to us uh to to contemplate mm -hmm. what's the cost if we was to go into the community what's the cost have equipment issues business we have an update that we were getting ready to install I really need to talk to IT to see what that might look like you know with these satellite meetings and the cost but that's going to entail because I can't really answer that with the new technology we have a lot of problems in the past when we Wi-Fi is part of it. We got to make yeah. sure we have adequate Wi-Fi in order to put the meeting out on there. We did what we've addressed some. Of, we've addressed a lot of those issues. The new dates back for Pioneer, Felda, and Harlem is my understanding. We can also bring back um, the information, and it should be timely because the next meeting will be. We may even have the new equipment installed by.
Right. That'll work. But anyway, I'm against it. Been to uh, Harlem. One person showed up. Went to Felda. I think nobody showed up. Went to the Seminoles. Nobody showed up. Harlem's five minutes from... On tour, it's a little bit different. Harlem, I mean, it is a five-minute drive. Uh, do you, do all, you do all that work, and then nobody shows up. You recall Eddie Warren, he was running at the time. He was the only one that came. He came late, left early. So that is something to take into consideration. You know, Felda and, and Pioneer, that's a whole different ballgame. They are further from. What about Pioneer? Pioneer shows up. Well, again, I, you know, it, it's it's putting it out there. If if they come, the ones that need to be there will be there. If they don't, then they don't come. But it's no different than anything else we do. We need to provide the service. I believe. I mean, I, I agree with Commissioner Turner. So the ones that want to be there, they'll, they'll come to the regular meeting. <clears throat> We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? second? Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Iglesias. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the second thing on the agenda tonight is the uh, board appointments. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Emma Bird as uh, chairman, chairperson. Second. By Commissioner Iglesias. Second by Commissioner Turner. Chair, or how does that work? Are you still in motion? <laughs> well, we're still in motion. Yeah, we're gonna we're going to uh, vote on that, and then we'll make a change and we'll move forward. Okay, do we get a vice chair, or are you gonna we're gonna have to unanimous? We'll get there in a minute. Okay. So, chairperson, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're Welcome, Miss Bird. Miss Bird. Well, I got to sit by you. <laughs> You got sent by Mr. Harris. Mr. Chair, you did a great job. Thank you. How many years? Three? Four? Four, Four, years. Four years. Thank you very much. Ms. Berger, congratulations. <clears throat> Would you consider being vice chair, Mitch, if I nominate? Oh, yes, sir. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. As long as Ms. Bird's nice, I'm good with it. Okay. I'm not the problem, Mr. Harris. I'm trying to get you some help. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, for nominating me for the chair. I appreciate it. I hope I do a good job with it and hope I stand to your expectations. So thank Commissioner Wills for being the vice chair. With that being said, we're going to move forward. Did we vote on that? I don't believe so. Do we need to vote on the vice chair? Can I get in the place of a motion, please? I, 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 I seconded uh, Commissioner uh, uh, All Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Madam Chair, with um, y'all's blessing, unless anybody is strongly desiring to change anything, we can have a great conversation about it. With the only uh, change, I would say, uh, Access 67 County Champion. Um, I'd love to jump right in the middle of that, unless somebody, you know, is, is uh, you know, dreaming about being the champion of that uh, night. With that, though, I would make that we just leave every other appointment the way it is, and uh, I'd make that in the form of a Second. motion. <clears throat> uh, the only one that will change is the chairman. Is the uh, you'll be on the board with the yeah, yeah, all the board of meetings. Yeah. Um, oh Lord, it's slipping Career source safety. and public safety yes. coordinating. Those council. two will change. Other than that, everything can stay the same. Yeah. Okay. Favor. Motion by Mr. Harrison. Second by. Motion turn all in favor. Aye. Motion passed. We're going to pull, I believe, A, A6. That's with no discussion. We're going to pull Madam Chair, A6. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Balance. Motion by Commissioner um, Turner, second by Commissioner Iglesias. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? I'm trying to get used to this agenda, to this tablet. So we on awards and appearance. Madam am I Chair, correct? Madam Chair. Yes. I'm, um, item uh, three on bids. 
I make a motion to approve um, the uh, the recommendation of uh, it's AOK, isn't it? O and A. Thank you. O A K. K C A. K C A. I'm sorry. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner. This is the bids that I F uh, R F Q 2021-21. Motion by Commissioner Turner. Second by Commissioner Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yes, Thu already went through the agenda. Going down to board and appearances at this time. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you, Ms. Lisa. Lisa Sands, Hendry Glaze Manager for United Way. It's good to see all of you. Just a quick update with our United Way. We are in the process of transferring Okeechobee County over to the United Way of St. Lucie. Um, just with a different little logistic things and stuff like that, it'll happen within the next six months. So just an update for you on that. So we'll then be United Way of Lee, Hendry, and Glades. Um, and also, I'm just here this evening to say thank you. Um, your staff and employees at the county have participated with our United Way over the last several years um, with employee payroll deductions to support our campaign. Um, our goal this year is $339,370. We're currently at 61% of that already to support social services here in Hendry and Glades counties. Um, so your employees have donated over $2,600 in the last year through employee payroll deductions, so they deserve a round of applause for that. So thank you. Um, I have a, a little award here for you that I'd like to take a picture of. And then I have Miss Margaret England with me, who's part of one of our um, programs, the Unmet Needs Coalition. And she'd just like to give you a quick update on that. So I'll let her do that first, and then we'll get a photo if you don't mind. Margaret England, uh, Henry Glades Unmet Needs Coalition. Now, the, the main thing about to remember about Henry Glades Unmet Needs Coalition is this is Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Um, we are partners with faith-based organizations, volunteer and social agencies, governmental agencies, community-based organizations, businesses, and individuals who seek to address spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of the individuals and the families affected by natural and man-made disasters in Hendry and Glades County. This coalition was formed by volunteers in January of 2018, and uh, we have um, assessed the needs of different individuals who applied for assistance, and all this information is kept confidential. Uh, we're a, rec a recognized agency presents the need to the Unmet Needs Coalition and various stakeholders to determine if the need can be met. And the coalition only funds cases where no other sources are available. Now, we've worked with ver various uh, volunteer labor organizations that provide assistance at no cost to the clients. We continue to seek uh, monetary donations and additional volunteers with various skill sets, including legal assistants, counselors, and licensed contractors to assist with cases. We're we are serving as an advisory committee in partnership with the United Way, who is our fiduciary. And we hold regular public meetings in the community for anyone wanting to get involved. This is a long-term recovery group, and we plan to be around for many years to come. Referrals can be made through 211 or any recognized disaster recovery agency, including the uh, American Red Cross or the Salvation Army. We also have a Facebook page with updated information, so check us out. So as, a, as one of your neighbors, I would like to thank the um, Henry County Commission for continuing to be a partner with us as neighbors in this community are helping other neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lisa. Um, for United Way, I think that we would never um, be able to appreciate the things you do. Um, they do a lot, and they'll never be recognized for what they do. So we want to say thank you. The same thing with Unneed Met Coalition. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, let's hold <laughs> Let's see here. Anyone like this real quick? Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, I was asked to be on, join the United Way, and I actually sat in on a meeting 
for the Unmet Needs Coalition and the work they're doing is just amazing. And you're right, without you guys, there's a lot of people that would be without. So thank you for your service. Appreciate it. And I, and I don't even think the community knows much the things that they do do because it is it is kept under, I would say under the uh, under the table a little bit there. But um, they do a lot. I went to a couple of meetings when they first when I first got on the board, but they do a lot, and a lot of people is appreciative of it. So once again, thank you to United Way and Unmet Need Coalition. Next, we're up to public hearings. Does anyone from the public wish to speak? Once again, we ask that you fill out a form. And at this time, we're on the agenda request. <coughs> Who is this? Bill 59, House Bill 59. So good evening for the record, Katie Wellner, <laughs> County Planner. This is the, or this next item is the adoption of the new comprehensive plan element on private property rights uh, that was required by the recent legislation, House Bill 59, from the state of Florida. So the element basically states that the county will take private property rights into account when making decisions. Um, generally, these rights are already included in the comprehensive plan and the land development code, but the, the recent legislation requires that they be explicitly stated in the comp plan in their own element. Um, staff has had a couple inquiries about this amendment, but mostly they've been to ask in for information on what it's all about, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Is there a public wish to speak? Okay. Okay. Any questions, Pat? Got any questions? Do come up here. Once again, this is a public hearing. Anyone from the public wish to speak? Please <clears throat> state your name when you come up. If you did not fill out a card. Pat Delance. The questioning is the what is going on on all the roads, including the road that I happen to be living on, is what is set by law for the roads and is not being honored by the uh, changes that have happened over a period of numerous years has gone totally berserk in the past two or three years. And the fact that we are no longer five acre tracks, we are two and a half acre tracks that were certified with no notice to the owners that lived on the road for many, many years. Nothing in the mail, nothing at all. And trucking is going beyond comprehension. It would be hard to even explain how many trucks. And the fact that Evans Road is also now being used as a main road into the back section. If you go all the way down to the end of Evans Road, you end up at Perkins unless you turn to the right. And then there's a new gate back there that says private property, no trespassing, and that is roughly, give or take, 5,000 acres. And anything that goes on back there is now coming out on Evans Road, and the trucking has absolutely gone berserk. It's the only way they got to get in and out. There used to be four different roads, and none of them are being used anymore. <clears throat> yeah, the portion of that, Mr. Lance, they use a road to get to that. The uh, portion you're talking about is Holland Farms. Mm -hmm. uh, back there, they've been there for 40, 45, 50 years. Yeah. That is Holland's Farms. That gate goes to their farms. And again, the, a lot of that traffic does come down uh, B Road as well. So A Road, A Road's not being used there any longer. You are correct about that. Oh, it's, but they it's do use crazy. B Road as, as another connecting uh, yeah, that portion I've, of land. I've been out there, what, pushing 50 years? And just. just yeah, Mr. Harris, that hell. connects to B Road as well. That's, that's Mr. Holland's Farms back there. Yeah. Have access down B Road and Evans Road, yes, sir. Is B a lot? Yes, sir. <laughs> a lot. Road. What, what, what? B Road. <laughs> That's the only two they could use, in it? Yes, sir. This, this is again. This is this is just we're we're looking at House Bill 59, Commissioner Turner. I know where you're going. This is not a conversation. We're right now. This is talks about land use, Mr. Lance. Um, so, well, the land use even on. A road, B road, 
uh, land use legislation road. legislation that was passed down that we are we are working on ourselves as well yeah it's 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 just gone berserk and of course we have we call them migrant camps and technically the way it used to be they come in to do especially the farming which that is part of their living uh, they were set up in the farming areas for these people where they could live close to where they were working and now it's just turned into they're living in uh, single wide some double wide mobile homes and there's 15 20 of them in there and that sure can't be a nice way to live it's technically illegal oh i know it's illegal code and i know where they're at and it's it's really rough I don't believe that these concerns are specific to what you're writing on here. But um, Margaret and I can get with Mr. Delance if that pleases the board and we can go over the specific issues you're talking about with the trucking and some of the items you just mentioned. Yeah, you can contact me anytime I'll come down. We'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Delance. Thank you, Mr. Delance. Does anyone else from the public wish to speak? <coughs> Vote on it? Because it is a public. Second. Moved by Mr. Uh, Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Wells. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We move on to Philip Road. Can I interrupt for a second? Yes, you can. Um, I believe the rezone RZ21-0003 was continued to this hearing, and it wasn't put on the agenda. Um, we are going to continue it to a later date to be determined, and it'll be re-advertised and re-noticed. The... Uh, applicant wants to hold a, a public input meeting with the community before they bring it to the board. It wasn't on the agenda, right? Correct. Harris, we're moving on to Philip Rowe. Um, Mr. Mark. So, uh, at the September meeting, you uh, directed proceeding with the steps to create a, an MSBU for Phillips Road. This is. I'll make a motion to approve option one, Madam Chair. Second. Before we move on, we have um, Mr. Rodriguez. Would you like to speak? Thank you. My name is Raymond Rodriguez, and I've been a resident of Phillips Road almost 40 years. I went to the first MSPU campaign 20 years ago. Um, what I want to address, or what I want to mention, I hope I, I'm going to try to be as brief as I can because I know you got a lot of people who want to speak about this issue on either side. Um, you, I, I received the first letter or notification that I got of any kind of formality, actually from the Henry County Engineering, uh, with the Henry County Engineering letterhead, uh, stated that uh, if a majority of the property owners are in agreement then uh, they would proceed with a, you could proceed with an MSBU. Um, supposedly there were two community meetings he held at uh, Christ Central Church. I received one notice uh, pertaining to that. I really don't recall if they mentioned the church or not, but it was probably on the notice. I didn't consider that an official notice of any kind, at least not by this commission. Uh, I'd like to know, was a roll call taken of the people that attended that meeting? Were all five of you guys there? I excuse me, Ms. Bird. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you, you, you didn't take your plaque with you. I almost called you. Miss Wills. That's all right. <laughs> and you, Mr. Ms. Bird. I'm, I'm, I'm Mitchell A. I, I, uh, I, again, I'll repeat it. I, was a roll call taken? Well, if you'll let me answer you. Yes, sir. Please. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, there was not a roll call taken. There was a list of folks that got there. They did put their name. They did put their address. Uh, the, the meetings were twice held. They were. Uh, tonight, all we're doing tonight is looking at the option of creating the MSBU. All right. The MSBU, you, you expressed your concerns about the MSBU. So there's several others as well. Um, 
to go a little further on that, if the road work hadn't have been done, a lot of the folks couldn't get in and out of their house. We could have not gotten a fire truck down that road. We could have not gotten a paramedic down that road. We could have not continued the service of the garbage down that road, and the mail service was going to go out 280. I, I know. Let me finish. Uh, okay. So what we did is we went in there and we did a, we did a fix. And you and I spoke on the phone, so it's not a, a new conversation. You and I spoke. Yes. And we've known each other for years, so we spoke. And the concern that you had was, you know, I don't want to pay, I don't want to pay a payment for the next 30 years. Exactly. And, and we've talked about that. So to kind of help, you know, move the process a little bit, what we're looking at is the MSBU is not going to be created to say, hey, you're going to pay this for the next 40 years. It's going to be this amount. That's what we got to pay back. Some of the owners said, hey, you know, we don't mind paying for the work that was done, but we don't want Hendry County in there. We don't have the right of ways yet. So what we're trying to do is create the MSBU now so we can get the portion that we have spent on the road, the county has spent, and let's just throw a ballpark. Uh, at one point, we was talking about $600 a year, correct? Yes. Okay, we was talking about $600 a well, year. Well, I, I, I assume so. It was mentioned in a... Right. Well, you and I talked a, about that, and I, I know I myself had told you that was a yeah, number that was put out. There. You scolded me because I didn't attend the meetings. I did scold you about that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I get a little leery when... When people tell me, you go to this church, and we're going to discuss this. Uh, you know, how official is that? Well, I wasn't going to throw holy water on you. I well, no, I'm not afraid of that. I get that, you know, as often as I, I can. I just want to get your input, because the thing is, the whole thing without trying to get those meetings together, when we do something within my district, I try to make sure that everyone that's going to be affected has the opportunity to do exactly what you're doing tonight. Come voice your opinion and that's what I'm I'm saying and there's others here going to do the same thing but right. what, I, what I want you to understand and everyone else can hear this as well what we're looking at is not saying hey you know you're going to pay six hundred dollars a year we're looking at the amount that we have we're looking at a different way of an MSBU so before we before we get too concerned about that there's a there's an ideal that guess what you may come in you pay yours off you're done you don't pay for the next five years or say someone else says you know what I can only afford seventy dollars a year so maybe they pay for the next five years, whatever the case may be. And the attorney is going to work that out with the engineer, but we're not trying to say we want, we, and the whole thing was most people didn't understand that. We asked for an easement. I'm not giving you my property. We don't want your property. But the county legally has to have right an easement in order to put our equipment in there. The engineer donated all the, the asphalt, but there's other things that have to be paid for as far as the work, the equipment, the man hours. So what we're trying to do now is figure out, okay, what's that amount? And once that amount's figured out, then we say this is this is what each landowner would have. And I understand all that. And instead of a parcel, we're looking at different ways of that. So you've had two parcels, which come to find out you only have one, right? I think so. Yeah, that, that was that was up in the air. I wasn't sure. Yes, Nobody sir. was real sure about it. Yes, sir. And we had one gentleman at the very end of the road. He had four parcels. I think. I thought. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought I seen you come in. So it was going to be like this. This gentleman is going to pay if it was just just using the number six hundred because it's not going to be that. He was going to pay $600 a year. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain. It's, I know it's not going to be $600. So this gentleman was going to pay $2,400 to whereas, say, I lived on that road. I had one parcel. I'm paying six. So we're trying to work this situation out to where everybody is it's an equal share. And I understand that. that. I understand so. that. What I was questioning is the authority of the board, this board, to do what they did. This board set those meetings up. I asked no, those meetings. No, no that's not what I'm talking meeting. about. Those meetings I didn't attend. Okay, I never got official notice. Do you know that when you get a certified letter to a rural route box, at least that's been my case, you don't get a letter. You get a notice to go back to the post office and pick it up. And if you're not willing to go do that, you know, because, uh, you know, the pandemic, for instance, that's one of the reasons I gave up that and, and the cost. I gave up my, my P.O. box, trying to cut corners. You know, I've been retired five years. I'm on Social Security. I've been, for the last five years, trying to figure out how can I cut corners to pay less. The P.O. box was one of them. To many of you, it might be minor. I've, I'm cutting my central air and putting window units on. Believe it or not, it's cheaper because you turn it on when you're in the room and you don't have to air condition 2,000 square feet of, uh, of living space. Even uh, Well, um, so I, I, my question simply is, who gave the authority to whom to go do the job that they did? We voted on, yeah, voted on board. that. It was voted no. when? It was voted on the board. The, thank you. September, September the 14th. Thank you. The 14th? It's all about September. public uh, safety. 
exactly what yeah, I'm Yeah, well, saying. when I, when I, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, it's not about safety for me. It's about, I don't like constituents coming to this boardroom yes, sir. and saying that we're incapable as a county. Of course not. And, and that we have infrastructure that's failing. But that road has been there for 40 years. <clears throat> Understood. Okay, but, I've seen listen. it when it's run. Yes, sir. From side to side with water. water. Yes, sir. A foot deep. Sir, listen. What was the concern then? I hear, I hear the emotion in your voice. No, it's I hear bad. the, I hear the, uh, the concepts that you have mentally with regards to cutting every corner to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. I get it. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize or cut you short on any way, shape, or form. But for me, um, I, I cannot stand government and our inability to get things done. And so when a group of constituents came in here. And and they articulated their were they at least fifty one percent of I, the I have, people. On, I, I have no. Would I that could, be a concern? I couldn't tell you if there were seventeen people or seven hundred people that lived on that road. I, I don't think there were that many, but uh, no. I, well, the point I'm making is is that I this board as a group said, hey, let's take action. Let's allow for the public safety, uh, if need be, God forbid, them to be able to access. Uh, for the other services that need to be rendered and then for the constituents that need to get to and from to be able to make it to where their ride is a little bit more pleasant. I, I wish we could turn on a dime and do that all over the areas in the county. On this one particular instance, we had a group of people that came in here. Like I said, they articulated it pretty well. I thought we spun on a dime. Clearly, no good deed goes unpunished. And so we're hearing the effects of that right now. But I think that the MSBU has moved forward to be created. And I think that the number that, that that will be associated with that MSBU is yet to be determined. And all of those things will be, you know, kind of found You're out as we about move the cost. forward. Yes, sir. Number, yeah, yes, sir. I, sir. I applaud you guys for doing what you did. <clears throat> that's, that's I don't applaud okay. you for not what you You're trying to get it paid back, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where we come in. That's where I come in. Yes, sir. All right. And, and God knows what that number is going to be. It hasn't been decided yet. No, sir. All right. So uh, the thing is, the, the only thing I'm saying is... Uh, I don't want an open-ended MSVU. If everybody here is satisfied with what has been done on Phillips Road, and I would say, let's let it run, it run its course for a year. Let's go through a rainy season. How good a job was done on Phillips Road? Let's see what's going to happen when the rain starts. But if, if people were in agreement, and in the majority, I don't mind paying my, my portion of, of, uh, of what's been done. Just don't leave it open-ended. Don't let somebody decide in the future, Mitchell, you may not be here. Daryl, you may not be here. Somebody in the future decide they, they know even less about Phillips Road, is going to say, well, now we're going to plant flowers over here and, 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 and paint a white line down the middle. Uh, Madam Chair, but, we have well, the you know, it's a possibility. It's 100%. Right? It's 100% right. not a ludicrous statement. I agree with what you're saying. Don't leave it open ended. I, I think that no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I think I that. Well, I'll, I'll show me of that, and, and you will get any more complaints out of me. Yes, sir. Well, uh, when I closed my PO box, just to close my, my portion of it, when you. I closed my PO box, the lady, and I think it was the postmaster, told me you will get forwarded every single piece of mail to your rural box for a year. She never once mentioned, oh, we're having difficulty getting mail out there. I know the guys that drive the trucks in the garbage uh, disposal. None of them have ever complained to me, you. to me, ab ab about, and, 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 you know, personally, that truck Mr. contributes. Rodriguez, I believe we can do this all night. I know, and, and I'm sorry, I took too much time. No, before you leave, though, understand, we, this, this is conversation we did have, because a lot of folks said. I wasn't aware of it. No, let me just tell you about the conversations, though. At least you'll have an idea. That we talked about street lighting. We talked about, we talked about it. I said, hey, we don't want street lighting. We want the road fixed. We don't want this. We don't want that. The engineer was very clear. He said, we don't want to do anything you don't want. We're just trying to make this road to where you can use the They road. already did. And originally that road wasn't MSBU. You're correct, because when I went no, the road, no, no, it was never. Yes, it was, was, and then it was disbanded two years later when they, when people started complaining about the entire it cost. Paved. It was paved. No, yes, it sir. was going to be paved. It was. It, had it was never paved. It was never done. It was going we, to be done. We passed that road in 1989. I was there, Mitchell. I, I was. I attended them. You were. You were not a commissioner back then. Uh, no, I was the one patching the road. Oh, oh, you might have been working. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Well, uh, it was never established, and three years after the that MS, the the same thing that we're going through right now, our money was returned, and if I may end with no interest. So.
We well, thank you. Thank you, Rodriguez. Thank, thank, thank you so much. I'm sorry things didn't go the way that you wanted to, but we do appreciate for hearing your voice. At this time, we're going to ask Mr. Michael Glenn. I believe that's right. We want to try to maintain within the, the time limit. Madam Chair, I'll be quick. Amen. My name thank is Mike you. Louie, uh, 16 years on Phillips Road. I think what um, Raymond was trying to point out to everybody is a lot of people here don't mind who are being fixed. Um, a lot of us don't want to have an MSBU, and I think the vote showed we don't want to have an MSBU. But a lot of us want to pay for what's been done. If we can come up with some other way where we can pay for what's been done and it's kept up, Every couple of years, we go with Shane, we do the road, and it's all done in a separate thing besides an open MSBU. I think we'll get a lot more people that would give up, not give up their land, but give up the rights to have their land worked on. You can have 70% of the people right now that are saying, hey, going to say, you're not going to tell our road. And I believe that's what they're doing, and I believe they have not come out with a payment. I, I, I heard um, Commissioner talk about the amount for it depends on the parcels that's on the land. Um, if it's one, it might be 600, but they're not saying you have to pay it all at once. It may say you can only pay 50 a year. They haven't come to that conclusion right. yet. Well, so I think we're getting ahead. Yeah, you know, you got to give them the opportunity to work it out, and that's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to say, yeah, you got to do it all at one time. But if we start the MSBU tonight, are you against the uh, MSBU? All the I'm for and against it. All it does is tonight, it gives us opportunity to set it forth. Right, the but number then it is like, this be, is what we got to pay back. It's not, right, there's but, no number attached to this tonight at all. Right, but who decides that number? 30 we would have a number of exactly what we spent on the road. 30% of the people, 70% didn't want it, 30% did. So, let's say we start the MSBU. Does 30% decide if we're going to spend $100 in the road or $3 million in the road? I think that's what most people are worried about. I no, and I understand that, but let me ask you this. We didn't go in there and fix that road. Someone in your household had a heart attack. And they well, could, I'm not they being fixed. You guys did so a great job. At that point, you're going to say, Henry County, you didn't make my road passable, and the ambulance couldn't get to my no, level. I'm not, I'm not against what you guys did. I won't did. apologize for fixing the road. No. I, honestly, I won't. I, I don't want you to. to. I've been in Shane's office twice right. since I last saw him telling him thank you. We appreciate what's been done to the road. We're just asking you to pay for what's been done so we know we're not going to get stuck with a million dollar bill. That's all we're trying to do. And yes, I sir. think with most people. That's exactly what's going to happen, sir. And if, and if it happens, if it's a set amount, like, $30,000 what's been done so far. And it's done today as the MSB is being set. I think a lot more people are going to be comfortable knowing that, okay, we did start the MSB, but it's only for this amount of money. And we're going to have a lot easier time dealing with people giving up, not giving up their property, but sure. you know what I mean. And I don't want 70% are going to fight it. They're going to stick a launcher out in the middle of the road because they can't do anything to it. If we do it, work together. Sure. Set up the MSB today if you want to. It's going to get done anyway. My thing, it's going to get done anyway. But put it at the cap of what's been done. And that's what we're, we, that is part of the discussion. Yes, sir. Okay, that, that's the that Several, several of the folks before. on that road said exactly that. We want to pay for what you've done, yes. but we don't want no more. And then, you know, five years from now, if you need to do it again, we'll pay we'll again it for what you've yes. done. It seems we'll, open. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay, that's, that's how, I think mean, you get the majority of the people going along with that. Yes, sir. And that's what we're talking about. And that's reason it's, it's, it's important that everyone understands that. We don't, we're not going to do anything out there. Right, but a lot of people get the letter. To say it was done. It, so. it said, you know, you don't, the vote doesn't necessarily count. That scares people. And other people are thinking, okay, last time the road got up to over a million dollars. Yeah, that's not going to be the case. That's scaring people. If I think if we cap it, if you want to vote in MSBU, I think most people would be fine with that. But cap it today, at the, what we owe for the road right now, that way nothing can be done without a majority vote to get more done on the road. I think the majority should still rule. Well, it does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. James uh, Sabella. Sabella. I'm James Sabella. I live at 1845 Phillips Road. And I'm definitely for it. I mean, my mother-in-law is on first alert, and she has her little car. And at, at one point, she couldn't even leave the house anymore because she, her car was getting stuck down the holes. It was so bad. Um, I, I'm personally agreeing to move forward. I mean, the amount of money I've personally spent on my vehicle just to get them repaired between the shocks, the, you know, it needs to get done. And I'm not disagreeing with 
putting the cap on it, whatever, but to wait another year to see how this rain goes and all that, I think it's kind of foolish because it's going to ruin the road again, and now we're going to have to pay more money to fix it back to where it is. And, I mean, at the one meeting that we had at the, uh, at the church, we all decided, okay, we could set a limit on how much you want to spend for the whole year. But, you know, that might be 20 years. It might be a 30-year loan or whatever. But, you know, we were talking about getting all the drainage repaired, uh, getting it completely re you know, asphalted and everything. I mean, I'm definitely for it. I mean, it's been a blessing what they did now. I mean, day and night. And if anyone says otherwise, they're foolish because they forgot how bad it was. I mean, there was times we drive down here at one incident, there was a, a guy pulling a trailer and he actually got stuck. His trailer went down, his truck went down, and the trailer got jammed. And he was trying to pull it apart. But I'm definitely for it. Heidi, Danaway, Donaway. I just wanted to comment to Brad. I didn't. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Stallman. Followed by Amanda. Please state your name. Hi, I'm Mike Stallman. And I am for the road being turned over to the MSBU. I guess all I can say is that I did give letters to the two people who are opposed or they should have came to the meeting because we did say, you know, the MSBU hasn't been decided what we're going to do. It's going to depend on what everyone decides, how much, you know, money we're going to spend. But, you know, I think, Mike, you said you got drunk the second time and the first time Mr. Rodriguez didn't even come. But that's what you told me. You got drunk instead of coming to the meeting. So if you would have came to the meeting, you could have heard that we're not just making an MSBU. We're going to move forward. Thank you so I much. I talk while you talk. Well, you brought me into this. Thank you. Well, you said you got drunk instead of coming to the meeting. At this time, we're going to call order, or you can be excused out. Thank you so well, much. You can continue. I'm, I'm really through. I mean, we're going to set up the MSBU, and I hope everybody comes and I hope, you know, if people can't afford 600, make it 200 or whatever. We just want the road to get fixed and we want it to be, you know, where it's at now isn't going to stay that way. We need to put pavement on it. And, you know, I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Adams. Good morning. My name is Miranda Adams. Um, I just wanted to touch on the severity of how our road used to be. I mean, I have two little girls, just had a baby in March, can't even walk a stroller down the road with the baby. The girls can't ride their bikes. Um, the work that has been done has been incredible, but unfortunately, even what has been done is already starting to disintegrate. And I'm not going to speak for anybody else or say I know what people think, um, but my family personally is a definitely pushing for a paved road for an MSBU. We don't want to wait, see what happens in a year. We want to be able to go for bike rides and walks with our kids and enjoy our house without feeling sick to our stomach that I can't leave because my car bottoms out in that pothole or my car shakes the whole way down the road and I don't want to keep paying for damages that have been done to my vehicle because landowners were not filling in the potholes in front of their houses. Um, so those that are against the MSBU, um, would there be some type of agreement that they would have to then repair the holes in front of their home because it's it's not fair to those of us that take care of the holes in front of our house but have to drive over everybody else's um, so I think it would be fair to have a flat base pay that everybody pays for that paved road with the drainage which would prevent a lot of that damage from happening again um, but I thank you for fixing it and I hope that we can continue down that path thank you mr. Zale How are you guys doing this evening? Good. My name is Ed Strait. I live at uh, 2150 Phillips Road. And what you've done is excellent. I appreciate it. However, it's still not going to last for more than a short amount of time. And I am personally the one who suggested the $600 a year. And while I feel like 
$600 a year is not that much to ask to drive on a nice road. I also have a family of a small daughter who likes to ride her bike who can now ride her bike up and down our road. Again, I appreciate everybody saying that we want to pay for what has already been done, which we, we do and want to pay the fair amount. The problem is, is that that's not going to last and then we're going to be back here again. And those people who want to complain about paying their fair share, shame on them for not showing up to a meeting. I showed up to a meeting. I left work early today to come to this meeting. Every person got that letter. Every person can walk down, can go to the post office and pick up their letter. Shame on every person who didn't show up. It's on them. It's, it shouldn't be on those of us that did show up, showed up to two meetings to make sure that my voice was heard. I believe that the majority of the people on the road want the road fixed. And I'd say that it's 51%. There are two people, one of them has left the meeting tonight, that are absolutely trying everything they can do to not have the MSBU go through. So shame on him for doing that, but thank you. I appreciate that we're gonna have MSBU because it's gonna have to go through because the county needs to be paid back for what we've done. I hope that we continue to do that and that we continue to pay money to get the road fixed the right way because obviously we all know that it's not done the right way. It was a quick fix and we appreciate that. Thank you Thanks so much. We, we have to understand that um, in doing repairs, sometimes there's a need that overrides a want and there was a need there. So we appreciate the, the, the board for voting for it. Um, sorry we didn't please everybody, but we're never gonna please everybody. You know, I had to learn that. You know, we want our cake and ice cream and eat it too, but we're never gonna please everybody. So I'm glad that we were able to set aside some people and I hope that they're able to set it where it's affordable for you all to make the payments because we're, things are not free anymore. It costs, you know, is it either you cost pay for it with one lump sum or you work on making payments. So thank you. Motion by Commissioner Turner, followed by, uh, moved by Mr. Commissioner Harris. Harris. That's your name? Okay. <laughs> Everybody agree? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion moves. Mr. Mark, I believe you up. Yes, next item is related. This is a second procedural step. It's the uh, adoption of a resolution of intent to use the uniform method of collection for any assessments imposed under the MSBU. Um, again, it's for Phillips Road. It would be for assessments that you impose Thank at a public hearing. Motion, motion to approve a uniform method of collection for Phillips Road MSBU. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner. Uh, second by Commissioner Glazes. All in favor? Wait, well, hold on a second. Oh, th 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 this is a separate public hearing, so okay. you need to ask to see if anyone has anything. So oh, this is a public hearing. Anyone from the public would like to speak? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair? Yes. I don't, I don't know if Commissioner Wills wants to do it, but um, when, Commissioner Wills, you feel confident that the, the steps that we've taken and with the concerns that you've heard, both uh, negative and pro towards this, um, you're, you're going to have a sunset associated with this and a, and a clear and concise scope that staff will be moving forward with with regards to that road, right? That is correct, Commissioner. Also, the, the, we're, gonna, we're going to hold, some of done left, but we're going to hold another public hearing, our meeting at the church, so we can all sit together and speak again. And we're looking at this, and, and like I said earlier, the, the whole idea was not to charge this gentleman four times. Let's work it out where he pays just one amount like everyone else. Because we do have folks down that road that own one lot, two lots, three lots, four lots. So we're looking at, a, you know, trying to balance this out to where it makes sense. Rather than this gentleman paying $2,400, I mean, it could be as, as minimal as $500. So we're, we are, we're trying to work this to where it works for the folks, not against them. We, we want to help them make it that way. When they did this work, I can tell you that I was told by the gentleman on that was doing the project, if we really wanted to pave that road, we could go in there and pave it now. They said the base they put in, the rock they put in, and the material they put in there as far as stabilizers, all we'd have to do is go in there and pave it. We could do that. So they didn't, they didn't really just put a Band-Aid on it. They did a good job. Road, road and Bridge Engineering, they've done a very good job on that project. But yes, sir, we, we are going to have another meeting where the folks can come back and discuss it. And we're going to make this where it's, it's even. It's not 3,000 here and 500 there. We are working this out to, to where it benefits everyone. What's the total linear feet on Phillips Road? I don't remember that, do you? It's a little over a mile. It's a little over a mile? Oh, so it'd be over a million dollars to pave then. Okay. You're just doing asphalt, probably not. No? Of course, okay. Right. You're doing everything else, drainage, yes. Okay. Well, that, that's, you know, that's, we got issues there, but that's, not, that's a total different animal we got to try to skin. So. 
be within the MSBU? No, sir. We were doing just the road. That's, that was the MSBU. We set it up. That was going to be just the road. So no drainage. We haven't got. We don't have an avenue to drain that area. Phillips and Murray Road. We are working on an avenue to get to drain that area. That's never had drainage, and that, and the folks that live there can tell you that it's always been that way. I've been there when the road was needy. I've been there many different times. So, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I mean, Madam Chair. I I I just like to request on whatever y'all are going to present at the church at this next community meeting, I'd like to make an agenda item and have it on the screen here, just so just so as a board we Absolutely. can be brought up to speed and, and understand. And then I'd love to hear what your concept is. And if you'd like to do that before your community meeting so that you're more ready for prime time, because the reality is, is that constituents are going to be harder on you in their neighborhood than what we are as a board. And so I would just love to be educated you know, a little bit more. I've driven down it, but I'd, I'd love to, to understand what you're saying from a standpoint of, where potential drainage could be, you know, just looking at it from an infrastructure standpoint in a long-term conversation. Thank you, Mr. I Mr. like Chair. that idea. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. <clears throat> if, uh, if the meetings are going to always be like this when you're in charge, can we go back the other way? <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, girl. <laughs> Don't you just love it? <laughs> Remember when you get the hand. I get the hand. <laughs> oh. Over with now. At this time, yeah. we're going to move forward. <laughs> Mr. Mark, I believe you back up for the uh, East Henry. Well, no, this is the EMS MSBU ordinance. This is item C for public hearing. Oh, hi, public hearing D. Right down. Is there, um, Madam Chair? Thank you all for coming. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Madam Chair? Yes. Um, there's some things that's going on with this situation. Mark, is there, is there a way we could actually table this to a, a later date when we have time to get more information on this EMS MSBU? You mean D? Talking about D, the EMS MSBU. Okay, well, um, in order to impose assessments on the tax bill I understand. In, uh, at the public hearing in September for next year's tax bill. You have plenty of time between now and September, though. Need the procedural step you have to take is to adopt the uniform method resolution by December 31st. Um, you have as late as March 1st for that if the property appraiser and tax collector both agree in writing that you can hold your public hearing later, but no later than February 28th. Uh, so you could go that late, but you need their consent. And I, I guess staff needs to know what, what you want us to look into. You know, Mark, if we went with MSBU, would that affect our uh, agreement with Glades County? Right. We can't do an MSBU and go. So we don't have an agreement yet. We have an oral or an understanding, but nothing in writing. But but the but the understanding with Glades was joint operating station with count Henry County staff providing the ambulance and the staff, and, and maybe the first responders the first um, medical response for a region that would include Hendry north of the river and the western part of Glades. And it wouldn't be mutual aid, that'd be first response. And so for that, the you... Funding source can't be... Uh, and exactly. you can't have Hendry County taxpayers paying right. for Glades service, Glades you know County... Because of your constraints on educating us with regards to uh, recreation, you know, right. how, you, right. how you've always made, you know, you yeah. framed that up for us very well, so... But we have to adopt this first. No, no, ma'am. No, no. So, so, Madam, Madam Chair, let me tell you where I'm at. And, and Commissioner Harris, I'd love to know if what you were alluding to was okay. you think we potentially have a good thing going with Glades County on this. Yes. And I think that this potentially throws a fly in that ointment. I, I would be more receptive towards tabling this indefinitely. Yes. And okay. And and Miss Davis, I'd like to know why you disagree with that, or if you're okay with us. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think you have two options. You could approve, or can correct me if I say this wrong, you could approve going forward to create the structure, if you will, if you wanted to, tonight to meet the December 31st deadline, but then you could choose not to actually implement it before next year's budget. Or you could just decide, um, as Commissioner Turner was just saying, to, to be done. I'd like to do the latter option number two on this, which is decline the uh, top to adopt the attached ordinance. And, and my logic on that is because I just I want to keep it a cleaner discussion moving forward with staff and their ability to 
I don't I don't mean to use the word from a fiscal standpoint, but you know, all of the different nuances that have to go with you all negotiating how we're going to work out that detail with with North Glades and getting the protection that you all have brought to us and our attention that we need to we need to have on that side of the river. So that's where I'm at, Madam Chair. I, I option to decline uh, in in totality. Can I have a second? A motion. Second. I second. Motion by Commissioner Harris, option two to decline and adopt the ordinance. Second by Commissioner Wills. All in favor? Public hearing. But public hearing, yeah. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> public hearing. I give the public a chance to okay. speak. This is a public hearing. Anyone from the public wish to speak at this time? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Moving on to e. Madam Chair, do we even have to worry with no. No, e, 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 do? No. e is irrelevant now. How about F? Talk about F. Um, so this is a follow-up from the November meeting, where, where as part of the, you know, the consultant who did the MS study also is doing a study on fire rates, and he's going to give you that report by the end of January as far as possible changes to your fire MSBU rates. He started work on it, and one of the things he identified off the bat was that the service territories for the fire departments don't match up with the MSBU boundaries. So you have rep people who are in fire department service territory who are paying their assessments to another MSBU than their own fire department. It's just kind of a mismatch. And so um, we propose to make the fire MSBU line the same as the recreation MSBU line. That would make, that would move all of Pioneer, most of which is currently in West MSBU. It would move them to East fire MSBU. And, and, and it would be an increase if the assessment rate stayed where they're at now for those folks. And then you also have some people in the central part of the county. There's not many. It's a very rural area, but the central part of the county that kind of, well, there's maps in your book there that shows you those folks. They also would move from west to east. So that's the, that's the proposal. And I know Commissioner Turner wanted to have the parcel count and how many people are affected. And so now we've provided that. And so the recommendation is to move forward with that change, but I have an alternative if you don't like making that change. I, Madam Chair, I don't like that change. Um, and reason, and just be very direct, reason being is that portion of uh, our area of the county has had a relationship uh, way past my tenure as a commissioner. And the relationship that they've built with this side of the county with regards to fire services is extremely strong and that's a that's a fraternity that I don't think we need to mess with this isn't because I'm fearful of them not voting for me this is because those people save lives and that's a click I mean it's, it's no different than the click in the city of Clouston and East County Fire you know they all work very well together with one another the people in Pioneer have been working with LaBelle for a ton of years and I think we need to leave that alone as it pertains to all of those those worlds colliding so that's my suggestion. Why, why can't we do that? We can with the with the alternative that you've provided. Yeah, the alternative would be to um, still move the line to get them lined up with the fire department service territories, but it would be the the reverse. So in other words, the um, portion of Pioneer, it's well, it's well, it's really Ladika. Yeah. So Ladika would move from um, east. east. Fire MSBU over to West Fire MSBU, and then so the entire Pioneer territory would be in the West, and so that would likely be a decrease. What would be at current rates? It would be a decrease for those folks. The West would pick up more people. Would pick up, yes. yes. But then um, the, you also would have West losing some in that central rectangular area that runs um, south of Pioneer. It's really rural, rural, sparsely populated. Um, there's a part there that's currently in West, but it's served by Manchura. It really belongs in the east, and you got the parcel count for that. I gave you and. Um, no. <laughs> so if you wanted to do that change, you could give direction to go that direct to go that way tonight, but you can't vote on the change because there's some. It's different than what we advertise, so we would have to. Redo, uh, it. redo it and and we'd have to get property appraiser and tax collector consent and hopefully they get that um to do it um before march 1st but yes, sir. before we move forward mr bosley this is a public hearing anyone from the public wish to speak mayor that's what <laughs> the mayor of pioneer <laughs> Fred Bosley, for the record, 
And uh, I'm in favor of, uh, of leaving uh, the fire department in the West District and also because of the, the um, working together with, uh, with the LaBelle and, and uh, whenever they have their meetings at, uh, with forestry and, and so it's a central point. Okay, so we still have the um, East and West uh, there at the uh, first first curve, it's all right if we we pull the DKN because we service them anyway. Well, if something happens on Henry Isles on the Glade side, we service them too. We go over to um, um, John John Farm Road. We go over over there. So I think it's it's very good. To, in wherever wherever Pioneer, we don't have very many. As, as far as uh, on the on the staff, but we we do a lot. Most of them are working. That uh, I think it's it's great to to leave it leave it there. Uh, if we if we had to have an increase on the for the fire and rescue or or whatever, we're, one of these days we're going to have to expand that that uh, fire department right there. And and uh, we've had the opportunity and passed it up a few times. Uh, whenever uh, the, the farmer uh, owns that land right there around the fire department uh, to get permits for the, uh, the uh, digging the pits and, and different other things to buy some little bit of uh, L shape right around the fire department because it's growing. I, you can see see the from the permits that are, that are coming and they're pulling they're pulling dirt in there all the time and then whatever. Here comes the trusses, and here comes the cement truck, and we're going to need it. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Can I get a motion? So are we going to leave it as it is? No, ma'am. Um, what we would do is, is to um, take the proposal as presented from uh, legal counsel for exhibit, <clears throat> Mark, I believe it's B or is it F and G? Uh, yeah, F and G. F and G. Uh, to be the new east-west fire uh, boundaries. Then you've got to redo it? Mark. Yeah, we have to advertise and we'll bring it back to you in January or February. So we doing which ones again? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna re-implement exhibit F and, G F and G to be the new fire boundary lines. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Turner. Second by Commissioner Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 One opposed? Thank you so much. There's nothing under consent at this time. We're going to staff report. I believe Mr. Mark. Yes, uh, redistricting. So this is the final step in that process. Uh, as you know, last Tuesday night, you and the school board reached consensus on Proposal 5. And later that night, they voted and adopted Proposal 5. So you're being asked to approve and make Proposal 5 your district boundaries for the going forward. Second. Motion by Commissioner Iglesias, second by Commissioner Wills. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Mark. Yes, the uh, authorization to initiate litigation to remove occupants from 1380 Apache Circle. This is county-owned land. Um, came to us by his treatment tax deed. The former owner was hanging around uh, and still there, although they called me this morning and said they're going to be out by Friday. Hopefully that's true, but um, we would want to get authorization to be able to proceed to so help. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner. Second by Commissioner Harris. All in favor? Aye. We have the uh, redesignation of the plots within Fort Denote Cemetery for mausoleums. Um, Currently, mausoleums are restricted to a small <laughs> section of the cemetery, and there's a desire by at least one family to build um, a mausoleum in a section that's for mo memorials and monuments only. So Commissioner Wells brought this to our attention, requested that we put it on the agenda with a resolution that you could approve if you were in favor to redesignate um, blocks A, B, G, and H for the first edition to be able to be used for memorials, monuments, and mausoleums. Uh, yes, sir. If, if anyone needs uh, clarification, I'll be glad to explain it. I, I, I need. I, I want to understand it. You like it? Okay. Uh, in Fort Dino Cemetery, there is a little roundabout, and there's mausoleums in it. Technically, in Fort Dino Acres, throughout the entire cemetery, are are above ground now 
There's only one little piece, but it's above ground. Looks like you take a vault and you leave the three quarters of the vault sticking out of the ground. That's throughout the entire cemetery. So technically, someone could come in with an attorney and say that's a mausoleum, and they are correct because it's an above ground burial site. The only areas that we have room for that is A, B, G, and H. The two, the four center lots are completely filled. I do believe moving forward, though, in the new cemetery, we need to designate that. This is the only area, just like Ridgeline, this will be the only area that you can have a mausoleum. Secondly, in that cemetery, we need a veteran section. We do not have one in Fort Deneau. They're, they're just wherever they're at. So with that being said, if you guys, if you need any more explanation, I'll be glad to give it. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Iglesias. All in favor? Just a question. Uh, just a clarification. Okay. So you said we have no veterans section, and okay. but but there's nothing in here. I didn't know about that detail. There's nothing in here about that. So I don't no, know. No, going forward, I'd like to. That's nothing with this old cemetery, Mr. Lapp. It's the new cemetery. I want to make sure that. And Shane, you may know. I know that we discussed it, but I did not. I have not seen the new plat. But we need to make sure that we do have that. It. No, sir. Not talking about this. moving forward. We need to make sure in our new cemetery we do have that area. So. Make sure you get your pavilion out, too. Okay. That's phase three and four. <laughs> let's, let's get the dirt there right now. Thank you. Ms. Margaret? I, I need a sign. I'm sorry. Right? I interrupted your vote, so you're, okay. I, if you can proceed with the vote. I interrupted you before you voted. Motion by Commissioner Harris. Second by Commissioner uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion stands. I got one brief additional item to bring to your attention. So, um, one of the items you approved by consent was the hiring the law firm from Fort Myers to handle code enforcement lien foreclosures. Um, when we talked about that last month, um, I had said that I'd be doing. You approved moving forward with two of them. Yeah. And I said I would do them. You uh, put that if, to them. Yeah. If, Absolutely. So, do we make that form of motion? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adjust um, the the items associated with the two code enforcement uh, foreclosure cases that we gave permission to our attorney last month to now push towards the new uh, outside counsel that we hired. Second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Wells. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Ms. Margaret? Thank you. Um, Ms. Shane, you have anything? Shane, is this, are, are you coming to discuss the change order number five with Community Asphalt? Yes, for the one I emailed this afternoon to you. I make a motion to approve um, <clears throat> the change order number five in the amount of $95,602.81 um, for the items that need to be fixed on County Road 835. By Commissioner Turner, second by who? Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Thank you. Thank you all so much for, for allowing us to get the standing number out there and uh, y'all jumping on it like you've done, Shane. Before I go to Commissioner, you, I mean, uh, Ms. Davis, um, Mr. Mark, um, I know you've been dying to get this. They gave you one free day off. We want to acknowledge you for 15 years of service to the county. <laughs> they gave you one whole free day off. <laughs> I'll take Christmas Day. <laughs> We just want to say thank you for your service in the community. I just met Mark about six years now, so, and I tell y'all he's wonderful and he loves collard greens, y'all. <laughs> so y'all, you know, we want to say thank you. Appreciate your service. Mark, when you hit that 30 day, 30 year, we'll get you a second day off. <laughs> <laughs> if he take that one day, <laughs> you'll take it. Take it. Thank take you it so two, much. Two, he'll take it on two halves. <laughs> We appreciate you, Mr. Mark. We thank you so much. Some of you know him longer than me, but I, he's a good man on the outside looking in, and I appreciate his service. At this time, County Administrator Jennifer. Before you is a minimum wage discussion. We've talked about it a, a little bit at the last few meetings, and our HR department and our OMB department have done a lot of work in gathering um, where we are with our minimum wage for the board and also all the constitutional officers. We did an analysis of what that might look like countywide at $13, $13.50, $14, and $15. Um, as you all know, right now with the, with the law, we are only required to go to $10 as of 9-30, uh, 2021, and um, we, uh, we have done after a lot of analysis and looking specifically even more so 
at our EMS department uh, because they are unionized and so forth and having some openings that we we need to fill with some paramedics and so forth um, I am recommending for you to consider Instantaneously. Yes, sir. Move. Second. Effective tomorrow, if, 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 if it the board, with the understanding that the union, um, it has to be approved by the union, um, and in doing so, we would retro theirs to the same day as all the other by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you so much. Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that this takes this this kind of checks one box in my mind's eye, and I, I think that we're all in the same accord on this. But the other item, and I don't know if you were going to speak to it, is um, the one thing that I've heard Chairman Wills, uh, now Vice Chair Wills, speak to on so many times, which is um, a lot of longevity, and maybe not, maybe not hitting the mark the way we would like to see it happen. So, I'm sure you have a plan <clears throat> in place for how you want to address that. Um, and also, we're talking about people's livelihoods. So, you know, the ability for us to discuss that and it not get, you know, um, uncomfortable. Because, I mean, granted, if, if you're if you're slick with a computer right now, you can find out what anybody's making that works in the public sector. There is right. But at the same time, we want to be, um, you know, appreciative of everyone's uh, privacy or understanding of everyone's privacy. But I do hope that it is something that we will keep our, our eye on the prize, so to speak. And uh, Ms. Davis, you'll lead us you'll lead us to a, a great place on that, like you've done here. Um, and and I really appreciate you taking the the bull by the horns. And when you look at this analysis that you all have prepared, ma'am, thank you very much for doing this, Mr. Proverbs. You can tell there was a tremendous amount of work that went into this, a lot of detail, and um, you know you you clearly had buy-in with the constitutionals, and or you made buy-in with the constitutionals to get the information that you needed to be able to provide this data set to us. But I think that this is the definition of us moving the mark to not only make <clears throat> the the people that are bringing the services to the to constituents every day um, more more in line with what they need to. But it's also the definition of making our county more competitive, and, and you know, with the private sector and with what's going on, I will tell you, it's it's hard to hire people right now. It is very hard to hire people, people that we were paying um, 22, 18 to 22 dollars an hour just a year ago. We're now, you know, in the high 20s, and and the the package that we're giving them, it's I mean, it's it's impressive. And so, you know, I know how that backs in on this end, but very long story long. Thank you very much for what y'all done on this, and, and I think this is a very good move for the county. So. Thank you. You can't get help, though. Anyway, if we, when we get ready to do this, let's do it before the budget, not after the budget. Already, um, no, I'm talking about when we move forward. I'm sorry, to that point, if you will also um, make the motion. Thank you. I'll go find motion, the money. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we, you know, Ms. Uh, Jennifer, we really appreciate it because it did take a lot of work. I saw the, the paperwork and the effort that was put in, and I know the, um, the works of Henry County is really going to be appreciative because you want to keep them local. You don't want them to travel to go out, and we know that there's other counties that pay more than us, but we appreciate them staying here with us. Anyone else have anything to say? Um, old business was emailed to you. Anybody have any comments for the old business? This is a public hearing. Anybody from the public have anything else they'd like to say? And we have business by district. Mr. Iglesias. You got two pages. You got two pages. Let's, let's I, I, know, I know you were watching. <laughs> I, was watching. Uh, no, I just wanted to be clear. I, I start scribbling. So I want to address um, a few things. Number one, Mark, I know that uh, Montura's Central County District Attorney has replied to the Attorney General on the golf cart use and we're waiting for a response from that. But since then I've actually been contacted by somebody in Flag Hole asking about golf cart use. So my question to the board is, as we discuss 
golf cart uses through the county. Why aren't we addressing them all at one time? Is there We're, a reason? I think, uh, yes, sir, I think it is. I think we wanted to, we, you know, Harlan, we kind of wanted to start with a pilot program. Um, Harlan was primed, and it was already occurring at a gross amount. As it relates to flag hole, I hate to use this, you know, colloquialism, but we kind of let a sleeping dog lie. Everybody that wants to drive their golf cart and flag hole is driving their golf cart. That's the problem. So now the <clears throat> sheriff department is enforcing it. They actually have issued citations. As far as I'm concerned, yes, they're well, doing I'm, a monitor as Steve well. Steve gonna get voted out of office. So. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. So I, then I agree, and we need to jump in the middle of it. Then you so, know. So do I need to make a motion to look forward? You know, us having that discussion or going through that process of. <laughs> On this side, Raymond. Nobody wants to ride a golf course down our. Road. Most of our golf course. Flag holes rural. Yeah. You know. And they the city they ride all over the place. I like to see staff. We don't have that. anything to do with the city. Yeah, I, I I think it's all about it. The the problem is is when you get into paved roads and speed limits and and how that sits sits with the state law and and our ability to overshadow. Mark's looked it up a couple times and has recited it to me and I apologize for not being up to snuff on it. If I recall correctly, it's, 30, I'm it's the state laws. You cannot ride a golf cart in, in a zone of 35 miles. It would have to be 25 yeah, yeah. and under. 25 and under, right, Miss Bird? 25 and under. Not many of them. All right, but I'm, I'm, I'd have to think it's 25. I'll, I'll bet you a milkshake on it. I take your day off. <laughs> Bird said double or nothing on a day off. <laughs> So uh, all I have is our ordinance. I don't have the statute in front of me. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> you're, you're right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but it, the 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 definition of a golf cart is that it cannot exceed 20 miles per hour. Oh. The, 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 it's defined to be it can't go more than 20. So it. Why does it say motorized or electric? I think it goes by CCs, doesn't it? I think it is. It, there's a whole bunch of weird variables. Uh, Technicalities variable. in there. Yeah. yeah. As far as the speed limit, but I don't know, the, the ordinance doesn't mention the speed limit of the road that you're driving on. Um, it does say county county roads or streets and unincorporated Henry County designated for golf cart use by resolution adopted by the BOCC. Because there's, you know, the one thing that happens, Mark, well not, it doesn't happen often, but, you know, there are street legal golf carts, there are street legal side-by-sides, and so some people have, you know, they've, they've done what they needed to do on that. I would tell you this, in my opinion, the sheriff does you know some people don't agree with this i think they're psycho the sheriff does an admirable job of his deputies playing in the gray area if you will and as long as you're not behaving like a jackass they don't issue a citation in my opinion you know well, and so my, you know sure they've been I, I know for a couple occasions they've had to tow vehicles or whatnot i just think it's the important thing of let's look into it let's make sure we don't leave no uh, yes sir turn, turn. And if there's an option for them to ride a golf cart in Flag Hole, let's do it. Yeah. That's what the community Just to be clear, Flag Hole, 7K Estates? Yes, sir. Okay, and those well, no, chain. No. Oh, it Taft? Mean? You would want Taft as well included. I mean, Taft, well, yeah, Taft as well. Got to be but county yeah. roads or all those county roads? Yeah, county roads. In all the 7K Estates? 7K Estates are all roads. County and so then you have to go and find out which roads they can ride, which ones where they can cross and where they can't cross. Um, I kind of piggyback off the city of Cluiston. There's areas that they can't ride. They can't cross the highway in, except for one particular area. So that's not enforced. Yeah, so <laughs> fourteen year olds driving golf carts. That's their that that's just their ordinance that they have that's in place. So we just need I to realize know. they gotta pick their battles. Yeah. yeah. So we can bring the, this will require a resolution. We're bringing it at a January meeting for your consideration. Yeah, I mean I think so and, and you know, I mean this is gonna roll right into, you know, I mean you can might as well just say, you know, you'd start looking at original subdivision, um, uh, Lake Ridge Estates, you know, basically all of Hooker's Point, you're going to have the same conversation, and I think it's it's definitely worth looking into. Um, on Flag Hole, you have everybody, you know, they either want to go see their friends or, or they want to go to Joe's. Yeah, that's it, you know. And so, Taft Boulevard, they'd have a tough time getting on Flag Hole Road, I think, but we could probably designate that. But boy, you, you run the risk of somebody getting struck pretty hard. And I think that's where yeah. Commissioner Bird said, yeah. you know, put boundaries as yes, to sir. where they can or cannot yep. go. Yep. All right. Um, that's and, and, and then the other thing, Mr. Iglesias, Commissioner Iglesias, is, is you and I both know there's there's people that are going to take their four-wheeler or their two-wheeler <coughs> and go to Joe's regardless of what the rules are. You know I mean? I, I know I've done it in years past, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, since our 
discussion in August about uh, CHL and Banyan Villages issue. I want to let y'all know that as of today, riding through, there's 32 homes that have broken ground. There's currently two at block, 11 at rooftop, two brought dirt in recently. There's nine more lots that are scraped from a builder out of Tampa, and there's eight that have a, um, dirt and plumbing going through. So there is progress. It looks like by the end of the year, there'll be 50 permitted. Some departments actually moved up inspections from one day a week to four days a week, and that all the builders out there are very appreciative of that because that was holding up some of their staging and um, contractors and, and they scheduling. mowing out there, Raymond. They are. Uh, uh, matter of fact, CHL has a meeting tomorrow with um, KK about some of the, um, uh, the rock that's coming up as they're doing some of the. Uh, correct. Correct. But Sycamore, they're maintaining both sides, and as well as Wellington and uh, Lexington. Shane, I just want to make sure Port LaBelle 1 through 9, we're staying on top of those potholes. And over there by um, Country Village, that one by the middle school there, the issue with that one guardrail that's still down, we need to get something there kind of. We got it. We got a lot of guardrail down, and we... The contractor we typically use went out of business. He's back in business, and we've had conversations with him. So we got a lot of guardrail down on 833 and 835 that's going to be wound up with that guardrail. So it will be pretty extensive because we haven't fixed guardrail in probably a year and a half maybe because we couldn't find anybody to price it or do the work. But we do have somebody now. Stand up. Stay up there. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, Francisco and um, the railroad crossing, U.S. Sugar contractor. Have they approved what you guys got to As quote of for? today at 5? No, sir. Not yet. I did email Ben Martinez with South Central Florida Express to ask them, are you good with the quote? You want to move forward with it? Um, but I haven't heard anything back yet. Sugar had hired a contractor to do the, uh, the intersection there where the railroad crossing is, and every time someone goes over, it is rough. So they don't want to use the same contractor. They're on Francisco by the fairgrounds. Um, I'd worked with the uh, DOT about getting signs on 27 and 80 and 833 to let people know where Montura and Flaghole are at. Mm -hmm. How you deal with the DOT blows my mind because it took seven months since the approval of getting that done. And it, and it just, sad. it's sad. It really is. Mm -hmm. I told them, listen, get the signs printed. I'll go put them in. Um, but that's, that's all for you. And um, lastly, I want to recognize Dave Potter from Cluleston. He's a, a Navy veteran. And um, he's orchestrated wreaths across America within Hendry County. And um, I've worked with him with, on the Ridgelon side. Myra's been working with him on the Fort Denode side and on um, and the two in Harlem. So it looks like on December the 18th, this Saturday, he's going to have a ceremony at the city park at 10 in Coulston. And then after that, some volunteers will go to Ridgelon and the two Harlem cemeteries and lay wreaths on veterans' headstones or tombstones, and, and that's very appreciative. And then there on Sunday, there won't be a ceremony, but they're going to get together at 1 o'clock at Fort Deneau here in LaBelle. I won't be able to attend that. I'll be on my road to North Carolina to a cabin for Christmas. So um, that's all I have. I'm not going to be at the staff Christmas party, but thank you, and um, I'll send a little something. Thank you. Uh, you know, going forward, I just want to thank... Uh, Thanks, Shane, for all the work y'all did out there. I know you heard some complaints tonight, but that is that has been a tremendous. Postmaster was very happy about it. WSI was very happy about it. So it's it's not it's not all bad. I know some folks, you know, said they didn't get the notices. If you haven't changed your address and you moved, you might not have got a notice. But by law, you have to register your address. So it's pretty simple. The mail comes to you. That being said, um, I look forward to setting the next meeting up with the with the folks from that area and explaining to them exactly what we have, uh, where we're at now. Uh, several several mentioned tonight, you heard them mentioning, uh, what I'd ask you to do is when we do come together, if we could have a, a number, this is what it would take to pave that road. You know, inch and a half, inch, whatever you want to put on the road. This is the number we have for that. If you want to do that move going forward, that's what we'll do. So I, that's, I really appreciate that. And um, again, just thank staff for all the work they do. You guys, you know, they don't see you. You're in the offices every day, but y'all do a lot of work. And thank you very much. Um, we had some stuff with our um, code guys, and, and that's, a, that's a conversation I'd like to have after the first of the year. 
uh, making sure they are protected. So uh, going forward with that, I want to meet with uh, Mr. Lapp and discuss options to doing that so they are protected. And uh, I'd also like to congratulate Ms. Bird. Ms. Bird, I think you're going to do an amazing job. It's just been a, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I look forward to the years to come. So don't think you're going nowhere. That's all I have. Must be God. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I have five things I did them in five minutes. I won't discuss any other commissioner doing that. <laughs> anyway, I'll bring my list to you. <laughs> District two is great. Me too. Thank you, Herbert too. Herbert too. How you handle this? Well, Madam Chair, just um, I'm I'm very appreciative to the county administrator for uh, the. The upgrade in the uh, the pay rates there. Um, I'm excited about the conversation moving forward on what I've heard Commissioner Wills speak to um, on a number of occasions. Um, one of my big goals for 2022 is is uh, I want to request from our IT department <clears throat> an understanding of of what our overall broadband situation looks like in this area, and then and then how how our partners regionally are connected. How we need to get on that, you know, because this COVID world, I think, has, has exposed everything. And uh, so it's just something that we need to be cognizant of. And I do think that we've made some significant upgrades in certain areas, but there's always there's always room for improvement. So um, excited, excited to get on with 2022. Congratulations uh, for being uh, nominated to the chair. And like to echo what Commissioner Wills has said, you're going to do a heck of a job leading us. And uh, Chairman Wills, thank you for the leadership that you provided the past few years. Oh, Madam Chair, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Mr. Harrison told me, I mean, Mr. Commissioner Wilson, told me he was bringing somebody in to, to see if I could eat. I ate that, okay? So, you know, but thank you so much. On the first term, he wanted to see if I could bite. No I wonder you got yeah. out of that chair real quick. I know, right? He knew what was coming, but I appreciate I it. I appreciate the challenge and want to say thank you. Thank you for serving. I appreciate everyone. Have a Merry Christmas. District 1 is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>